and won a lot of votes. I applaud her willingness to step forward. And I want to thank the team that worked so hard to connect with Kentuckians and to make our case, especially Josh Holmes, my indispensable advisor on all things political, Kevin Golden, who grew from a young field rep six years ago into running this campaign, and Terry Carmack has been with me since 1984. Since being my advance man mostly meant answering the question, Mitch, who? So most of all, I need to thank my best friend and partner. Elaine is an incredible person in every respect. She's stunningly accomplished as a leader and a public servant, a walking manifestation of the American dream. She's a blessing that I do not deserve, but for which I'm thankful every single day. The people of Kentucky had a clear choice, and they sent a clear message. Tonight, Kentuckians said that challenging times need proven leadership. And our nation will need Kentucky values and Kentucky ideas to defeat this virus and regain our footing. The working families in Paducah, the miners in eastern Kentucky, and the farmers across our state, the healthcare workers in northern Kentucky, and the teachers in Louisville, the law enforcement officers in Bowling Green, and the service members stationed across the Commonwealth are all going to continue to have a voice in every important national decision. I'm the only one of the four congressional leaders not from New York or California. I look out for middle America. And I've been sent back to Washington so the working people in this country who make things and grow things and mine things and raise families in our smaller cities and towns and teach our kids our values are going to keep their voice, keep their influence, and help our nation come back even stronger. The trust of the people of Kentucky has literally changed my life. When I witnessed Dr. Martin Luther King's March on Washington speech as an intern back in 1963, I dreamed about doing big things to help my state and our country. I never imagined Kentuckians would make me the longest serving senator in our state's history, or that my fellow Senate Republicans would make me the longest serving Republican leader in U.S. Senate history. Together, we've used Kentucky's front row seat for the good of our state and of our nation. We've made historic progress in rebuilding a federal judiciary that respects separation of powers. We've confirmed brilliant and qualified men and women who revere our Constitution. We've delivered historic relief and major legislative victories for Kentucky and for all 50 states. We've rebuilt our national defense and deterred our enemies. And in a turbulent time, we have accomplished all this while protecting the Senate's own rules and core traditions. The Senate kept the heat of intense partisanship from damaging our institution forever. The framers firewalled held the line. So tonight, Kentucky said, we're not finished yet. Kentucky wants more of the policies that built the best economy in modern history, not socialism that would stifle prosperity and hurt workers. We want to continue rebuilding our military and leading around the world, not to cut bad deals or just hope our adversaries will ignore us. We want to keep treating China like the threat it is not settle for a future where America slides into second class. We're going to keep standing up for the unborn, not surrender to an elite coastal culture that says the most vulnerable lives are disposable. So tonight, Kentucky said we're keeping our front row seat in the Senate. We don't yet know which presidential candidate will begin a new term in January. We don't know which party will control the Senate. But some things are certain already. We know grave challenges will remain before us, challenges that could not care less about our political polarization. We know our next president will need to unite the country, even as we all continue to bring different ideas and commitments to the table. But we also know, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that our nation 
our people can do this. For 231 years, Americans have dominated one challenge after another. We have everything we need to defeat this terrible virus and come back stronger. We have the most resilient institutions, the most blessed land, and the greatest people in the history of the world. This is no time to attack our Constitution like some outdated relic. These are the times it was made for. This is no time to tear down statues of our founders and heroes. This is the time to follow their example. This is no time to declare war on our institutions because one side is angry that the framers made it hard to achieve radical change. This is a time to defend all that we have inherited and pass it on even stronger. When I was a child, our nation was battling a different virus, polio. It was hurting thousands and thousands of families every year. As a very young child, that fight became my own. While my father was off fighting World War II in Europe, I was fighting a different battle. Thank God I had a guardian angel. Her name was Dean, and she also happened to be my mother. My mom found our way to Warm Springs in Georgia. We trekked to the facility over and over, more than 100 miles round trip. My mother took the doctor's advice as gospel. She kept me still when a toddler just wanted to run around, of course. She guided me through exercises I apparently totally hated. And she did it all while checking the mailbox every day for precious leaders, letters from my dad uh, from overseas. It is only because of her determination that my first vivid memory by her side in a small store on our way out of Warm Springs for the last time, buying my first real pair of shoes. 